Welcome to Radiologist Headquarters. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and it's time for five cases in about five minutes. Ultrasound number four. For each unknown case, I'll show each slide for about 10 seconds, and at that point, you can pause and examine the images further if you'd like. Then I'll review the findings, reveal the diagnosis, and move on to the next case. The clock is running out, so let's go. Case one, history of a regular right testicle cine clip. Slide one of two. Slide two of two. All right, so on this sagittal cine clip of the right scrotum, you can see that there's a normal appearing testis here, and then there's another testis with mass effect against it, and there's also this tubular cystic area within the area of this testicular mediastinum indicating tubular ectasia of the reedy testes. Now, if you look at these static images, this upper image shows again the two testicles in the right hemiscrotum, nicely labeled by the technologist, thank you. <laughs> and then there's also color Doppler flow in both of the testes, slightly less in that second testis, but still flow. And these lower images are showing uh, another sagittal image of that dual testicle in the right hemiscrotum, and then compare that to the single normal testicle on the left side. So this is polyorchidism, which is a supernumerary testis. And this refers to the presence of more than just two testes. It's not too common, but this is the most common type where there are three testes. It's usually actually more common on the left. This one's on the right. Uh, but the, one of the main complications is testicular torsion, so that's something to look for. Also, there's an increased risk of malignancy. All right, next case, slide one of two of the liver. Slide two of two, non-contrast CT scan. Okay, so we've got two sagittal images of the right hepatic lobe here, and there's this echogenic area with extensive dirty shadowing, all this ring down artifact that we see in the setting of gas. If this was calcification, that would cause really dense posterior acoustic shadowing, which is hypoechoic. So you might initially think, is this emphysematous cholecystitis? Is this the gallbladder? But the location is more central to the liver here, not typical where you'd see the gallbladder. And the CT scan indeed shows this area of coalescent gas and debris in the posterior right hepatic lobe. This is a non-contrast CT scan, no contrast in the aorta. And these coronal images again show that loculation of gas also on the lung window series. So this is a right hepatic abscess. And these can occur in different routes of infection, either due to hematogenous spread from the portal vein or hepatic arteries. If there's ascending cholangitis or cholecystitis, you can get biliary spread. And then if there's iatrogenic causes like a procedure or if the patient had trauma, that could also cause direct inoculation. Also, uh, this is typical for bacterial abscess, which is most common cause of abscess in developed countries, whereas parasitic abscesses are more common in developing countries. All right, next case, slide one of two in a perimenopausal female. Slide two of two, CT scan with contrast. All right, so we have a large cystic lesion in the right adnexa, and it has multiple septations. And there's also this area of mural nodularity, which looks heterogeneously hypoechoic and solid. You can also see that here in the transverse image. So whenever you see a cystic mass with a mural nodule, you want to apply color Doppler and see if there's actually flow within it, which we do see flow here. And that confirms that it's actually soft tissue and not just clot. Also, notice how there are these scattered low-level echoes within the cystic portion of this mass, something you can see in the setting of mucin. So when we look at the CT scan, you can see that this is a huge mass. It's somewhat simple in appearance in the lower abdomen, but as we move inferiorly, you see areas of complexity with these septations and areas of nodularity, as well as some ascites. And on the sagittal view, there's a uterus here, and you can see how large this mass is. So this is a ovarian mucinous cystadenocarcinoma. So whenever you see a mural nodule in a cystic ovarian mass that has flow, you think that it could be an ovarian epithelial neoplasm. And one way to remember mucinous, it tends to be massive and multilocular at the time of presentation, just like this one. So remember those M's. <laughs> All right, next case, single image, what are we looking at? Correct, it is Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Actually, it's a sagittal view of the liver, and we're looking at the portal triad. 
So we have the portal vein here by the green arrow, the common bile duct denoted by the blue arrow, and then the hepatic artery denoted by the orange arrow. So that's the typical anatomy. And it's surrounded by that echogenic fibro fatty connective tissue that you'll typically see around the portal structures. All right, last case, slide one of two. Slide two of two. So here we've got two sagittal images of the left kidney, and you can see that there's a multiloculated cystic mass in the mid to lower pole. We don't really see a solid component, but you do see numerous septal interfaces here. Now, if we look at the transverse images of the mid to lower left kidney, you can see that the cystic mass does have a lobulated contour. It's not really well encapsulated. It's not ball-shaped. And also, there's a suggestion of some normal renal parenchyma interdigitating between these cystic areas. And this is typical for a localized cystic disease of the kidney, which is actually benign. And this patient also had an MRI of the kidneys because this is a difficult diagnosis on ultrasound. And notice on this axial T2 image, again, we see that it has a lobulated cystic contour. It's not well encapsulated and rounded like you'd expect for a cystic renal cell carcinoma. Also, you can tell this is a T2-weighted image because the fluid in the spinal canal, the CSF, is bright, and so is the cystic material. Well, on the coronal images, you can, again, notice that there's some normal parenchyma here interdigitating between these cystic areas, and it's lobulated and not encapsulated. On this post-contrast image, we don't see any enhancement within the mass. This is enhancement of normal renal tissue adjacent to it. So this is a benign phenomenon. Sometimes, though, it can be confused with cystic renal neoplasm, and it's often followed up, and sometimes a partial nephrectomy may be performed. All right, that's it for five cases in seven-ish minutes, <laughs> ultrasound number four. If you enjoyed this lecture, you can subscribe to Radiologist Headquarters on Apple Podcasts and YouTube, and you can even leave a review or a comment while you're there. <laughs> Visit us at radiologisthq.com for additional info and to follow us on social media. Thanks, and have a great day.